meeting you and one thing you mentioned was, well, first you said you weren't really interested in the NBA or thought about it, and you were telling me about the Red Hour back. Can you share that story and then you give us? Yeah, Dan, I would like to. You know, there's an urban myth out there, which I suspect is probably pretty true. Those of who remember the great Red Hour back, the coaching legend, the cigar, the, you know, the the, the distinctive accent and gravelly voice, and I, I'm old enough to remember him on the on the, on the bench <laughs> coaching the Celtics. I know a lot of us here tonight are as well, winning all those championships, putting all those banners up uh, in, in the Boston Garden. But once again, if, if I've got it right, and you know, I want you to set the record straight, or you know, when you came out of FSU, you weren't necessarily a high-profile type guy coming out of college, and um, then some, you know, Coach Auerbach, of course, with his astute eye for talent, knew about you and wanted to get you to, to, to come to the Celtics, and uh, so, but he didn't want anybody to know that, and but eventually he got to where he wanted to, I guess, scout you, and he was going to go. Um, you know, watch you play, you know, in an all-star game or something, and then, but word kind of got out that Red Auerbach wanted, was going to watch this this redhead kid, and so he, he, Red Auerbach goes up, he sits in the back, he thinks he's going to be the only NBA guy there, and there's a bunch of NBA scouts there, and GMs and so forth, and so after about the first, I don't know, the tip-off and maybe the first three or four minutes of the game or less, he got up and made a big production and said, boy, I thought that Cowens was going to be some kind of player, that guy's not any good at all, and, and then, then walks out, and then I guess you know, nobody else drafted you, and then next thing you know, Red Auerbach picks Dave, Dave Cowens to play for the Celtics. So, I mean, it, it, is there anything to that? Or, you, are you familiar with that story? Can you set the record straight for us? I've heard the story. I think maybe uh, part of it is true. Um, I, we were playing, actually, Carl would know we were playing um, in Dayton. Um, and I, had, I didn't know anybody was in the audience watching us, but um, uh, we had just come off of a a big win against Kent State. We made a last-second shot and won that game, and then we came, went down and played Dayton. And um, it was the only game that was the weirdest. What I remember about that game is the referees were identical twins. <laughs> 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 well, what the hell? Did he make the bad call or was that guy? Is that the bum over there? I don't know. This never happened again, I'll tell you that. So, um... But I guess Red went a bunch of scouts there, and I guess he did after watching a half or whatever so much time. He got up and made a big deal about it, uh, going it with Red's like that and walking out. This is what I'm told. But um, uh, the other teams were going to draft me because I knew they were because I got letters and things like that. And actually, Bob Cousy was coaching the Cincinnati Royals, who were picking fifth. All right, and they were going to pick me. And they actually wrote me a letter, and I wrote back to Bob Cousy. I said, "Don't take me." And he, and um, I never heard back from him, but he was still going to take me. <laughs> Why did you tell him, "Don't take me"? Because I didn't want to go back and play him by my hometown. I wanted to go someplace else, just like I, I went to Florida State because I wanted to get out of the area. Not that I didn't like the area; it's just that I knew that I wouldn't be distracted by a whole bunch of things, and I could just, you know focus on, uh, you know, uh, being a professional player or a college player and experiencing that. Um, but, um, but it didn't make a difference because Cousy said he was going to take us. But when Boston took us, and they were actually some of the players of the, that were on the team the year before when they weren't going to make the playoffs, they, the guys who were right at, sitting on the bench, um, the coach, Heinsohn, was taking the starters out and playing the bench more at the end of the year so that they wouldn't win the games. And the bench was like playing better than they ever did, and they were winning anyway. And they were just sticking it up to coach's butt. He said, hey, you're not, is that why you're going to play us? You know, we'll show you. And so that's, that was going on before because he was trying to get to that fourth spot. And they ended up getting to the fourth spot, and they, and, and they took me. But... Um, so yeah, part of that, part of that is true. Yeah. Thanks for the great insight. We're gonna take our final break right now. We'll come back sooner than we did last time.